moves in motion to give to Pierce. I don't know whether he yeah, made he a touchdown, the Arkansas. Oh, my. The Hogs get the signal, and it's by the hair of the chinny chin chin. The voice of the Razorbacks, Paul Eels, was killed last night in a car accident on I-40. He had just played in the Houston Net Golf Tournament in Fayetteville and was headed home to Little Rock. Good evening, I'm Neely Jones. And I'm Matt Turner, live here at Razorback Stadium, the home of Paul Eels. And I'd like to real quickly just kind of step out of the picture and show you the lights are on here in the stadium, the flag is at half staff, and really this is a place where Paul made a name for himself in Arkansas. He made so many memories, a lot of chill bumps here in this stadium and in car radios as Paul was in that booth right back there. We're here to honor him today, a true legend in the state of Arkansas. Real quickly, at the beginning of the show, we're going to bring in KWA's Liz Hogan. And Liz, you're going to tell us a little bit more about the legacy of Paul Eels. Right. Well, Matt, this year, this fall actually would have been Paul Eels' 29th season with the Razorbacks. And though his widely recognized voice will no longer be heard here at the stadium during Razorback games, he won't be forgotten. Eels began his broadcasting career as a radio announcer in his home state of Iowa. He made his way into television, and in 1978... ...barely into LSU territory. Matt Jones looking, throws over the middles. Wilson at the 20, down to the 15-yard line. ...became the official voice of the Razorbacks. Throughout his long career, he developed close personal relationships with the coaches and players and became known for two signature phrases. Touchdown, Arkansas! Razorback fans across the state grew up listening to Eels' passionate play-by-plays. Jones now throwing to the end zone, and it is complete! Touchdown, Blame. Arkansas! Eels was honored as Sportscaster of the Year 11 times and just recently inducted into the Arkansas Sports Hall of Fame. Those who knew him say when he wasn't working, you could find him on the golf course. Eels is survived by his wife, Vicki, their son and two daughters from a previous marriage. Okay. About the old Grantland Rice saying that uh, when the one And Eels was 70 years old. All right, Liz, thanks a lot. Yes. Neely? All right, Matt. Investigators say the accident happened at approximately 8.13 last night near Russellville. State troopers say Eels was traveling east when his Chevy and Paula crossed the median and collided with 40-year-old B.J. Burton's car. Both Burton and Eels were pronounced dead at the scene. Investigators don't know what caused Eels' car to run off the road, and it's unknown how fast either vehicle was traveling. Where the uh, paint markings are on the highway is where the vehicle actually crossed the center line and then struck the vehicle. Number two, the uh, person carrying Miss Burton. And uh, her car ended up at rest right here. The accident remains under investigation. But the uh, overwhelming thought today, guys, is not to remember how Paul died, but actually how he lived. The Arkansas Razorback sports team put this piece together you're about to watch. Houston, I, uh, I can't tell you how much fun it's been to work with uh, Keith Jackson and broadcast your ball games again this you year. You bet. I'll tell you what. I'm just hoping I can get a recording and so I can listen to some of these old mys. And y'all <laughs> enjoy the feature of the best play caller there is in football in my book. You asked me about Paul Hill. Well, let's see. I've been doing this for 31 years, and that's absolutely the meanest, hardest to get along with fella. Never said anything good about anybody in his life. I, I just don't understand the man sometimes. I don't understand his disposition. He's almost like a grizzly bear. I grew up and listened to Paul Hills on the on television, listened to the sports all the time, and then I heard about this very, very nice guy who was very polite and all these things about Paul Hills, and then I get a chance to work with him, and the guy ended up being so mean. He just bosses me around. He never lets me say anything on the air. It has been so difficult dealing with him. I feel so sorry for his wife. He has got to be one of the meanest guys I've ever met, and I say, what happened to this guy I've seen on TV? This Paul Hills everybody's talking about, and I called my mother and I told her, Paul is treating me so bad, I want to quit, but I'm sticking with it. It's been tough, but I, it's, it's, been, it's been tough. No, I'm just kidding. Paul is actually one of the greatest guys I've ever been around. He's as nice as everybody says he is. I'm excited to be with him, and he loves the Razorbacks, and so he brings a presence of a fan as well as a great guy as doing play by play. And I have just loved from the outset working with Keith Jackson. Uh, the highest compliment to Keith has been people who have said, you and Eels have worked together uh, uh, for a number of years, haven't you? And I, I just feel so much of a comfort zone with him. Rick, on the other hand, was terrific too because he had all of the Razorback history, knew the players, was there every day. 
So uh, everyone, Jim, has, has contributed so much, and I have really been the benefactor of that because I, I really haven't had to do much. I just say, see that, basically, and they fill in the blanks. How's it been working with Paul? Yeah. Well, uh, you got to understand the guy that's old as I am. Uh, uh, I've been in the business for quite a while, and I've worked with everybody from ABC to ESPN to whatever. And so you kind of get to know announcers and what they'll do and their attitudes. And, and I got to tell you, Paul is a guy that uh, in our business, we're, there's a lot of things that go on behind the scene. I have never seen him, and I've been doing this business over some 30 years, lose his cool. Never lose his cool. The things that I know that could agitate him, uh, he's always kept a very, very straight, cool, calm face through it all. And after all, it's only TV or radio. But uh, it just says something about the inner peace of him that I, that I admire him. I, mean, I admire him professionally. I admire him spiritually. Uh, Before I make any change down here, I ask Paul, how do you want it? You know, I put everybody down here across the front the way Paul wants it. Where, I say, Paul, where do you want to be? And I put him there, and I put everybody else. Not because I'm going to catch anything from him, because I'm not. He's, gonna, he's just the nicest guy there ever was. But, but uh, he's just got a guy that you want to do everything for because that's what he is. He's just terrific. Paul is what you hope you'll be 20, 30 years from now. I know he's what I hope I'll be 20 or 30 years from now, just the way he carries himself. And uh, with Paul, it goes so much beyond what he does behind the microphone. It's a certain way a great announcer carries himself, uh, a certain way that he interacts with people uh, while he's on the air, while he's off the air. Paul's that guy. I mean, he is that guy from the time he gets up to the time he goes to bed. Oh, golly. It's, it's unbelievable what they bring to the table in the broadcast. Jim Elder was, was uh, phenomenal at statistics. He could do everything individually or team-wise. Andrew uh, Metters is doing, you know, a great job and doing much the same thing that Jim did. Bob Carver, I think, has been actually spotting longer than I've been. He worked with Bud Campbell for a while. So the crew has uh, had uh, some longevity, and uh, I hope that I have a, 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 another year or two in me uh, to, to do it. I, it's been just a labor of love, Jim. Probably the best guy I've ever known. The nicest guy. I think Becky Cross said something about him one time, said he could even find something good to say about an ugly golf shot. And that's got to be the best in the world. He's, he's a good friend of mine, the best guy, one of the best friends I've got. You know, they were so nice, Houston. I think they're worried that I won't ask them to come back next year for the broadcast. <laughs> no, I don't believe that. I tell you what, uh, pleasure working with you. You're, you're first class in every way, Paul. And uh, I know uh, Keith and Bob Carver and everybody that's associated with you feels the same way. Well, I appreciate that much, Coach. It's a labor of love. Everyone in the Razorback family remains shocked and saddened by this huge loss.